Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 8 of this Let's Play Viking Conquest. We are, of course, playing with Mordred the Viking, and you can see him here in all of his current glory. In the previous episode, we did a number of things for the quest line. We saved Dosinger from um, Sven the Bullneck's attack, although Sven himself wasn't there. We learned that it was the Earl of Kenema who actually sent... Um, most likely sent the uh, Vikings to attack, although the king himself didn't respond. But there was actually a king's hostile in Dosinger, so clearly the king has some interest, even if the local Jarl does not. And this is kind of suggested to us that the Jarl of Kenema is a bit of a backstabber, and we're not particularly happy about that. So I did put it to you guys in the previous video, asking basically, what do you think Mordred should, should do in this situation? Our response seemed to be that I should go and kill the Earl for betrayal. Like, we just don't deal with that. Um, and I was thinking about whether we should talk to the king about it, and basically, no, just, just go kill him. So I'm going to do that, however, I still hmm, do want to go straight after him. Probably not. Uh, one other thing that was suggested was I have a look at our party morale. Here we go. And so we are getting 50 from morale, minus 2 from religious differences. So apparently the Frisians are always Catholic. Uh, sorry, Chris well, yeah, Catholic at this era. And the Norse that I have are all no, uh, pagan. And I myself am pagan as well. We are losing some from lack of rest. That is an option I uh, enabled in the previous episode so oh, the priest is causing trouble interesting i thought he would make the uh christian guys that i had happier apparently not um so what was i saying oh yes so we will actually need to start resting so what i'm thinking is basically every evening we are going to have to set up a camp of some kind and then rest which is going to make it interesting when we actually start going a viking and raiding uh britain because we will have to be resting in hostile territory, or else getting back to sea or whatever and resting there and hoping nothing bad happens. So what I'm going to try and do here is I'm just going to see if I can just do a quick loop to see if there are any more robbers that we can go and kill. Here we are. They're running away from me now. Let's go and defeat these guys. We feel good about attacking outlaws. Marvellous. Oh, this is a rather nice hill. I like this hill. Let's hold this hill. Except for you. Don't. Who the hell's that? Oh, right. <laughs> the priest has just gone sprinting off on his own. Right, yeah, the priest, of course. <laughs> But apparently the priest does give a battlefield bolster to morale. I think that's what the um, information he gave me was basically saying. This is a very nice hill. I like this hill. If I had some proper archers, I would be doing a lot of damage right now. I want to move you guys to here and you to about there. Uh, no, I'll keep the shield, but I'll, I'll use the axe. Are they running? They're running, aren't they? No, they're not. Screw it, don't need the shield. Alright, let's do this. Battle is joined. Yeah, not a good idea to there. You let me get behind your lines, you are foolish. And you. So everyone. Huzzah! So a couple of people commented on uh, sound desyncing issues. I hope that's not going to be a problem in this one. I kind of suspect it's just because of how slow the axe swings, so it kind of sounds disconnected. But if you compare my speaking voice to what was actually happening, that seemed to be in line. So I honestly don't know. Yeah, we have infantry again. Huzzah! Um, 
Now, one other thing, if I was a developer in this mod, there's something I would really like to see on this screen right here. I would like to see the value of the loot, and I'd like to see how much I have to keep to keep the uh, people happy, like the minimum, and then I can make my own uh, value judgment based on that for how much I should leave. So when I took nine top pieces, they were unhappy. So we're going to try with six, uh, seven. We'll, we'll try with seven. Does that make you unhappy? That makes you very unhappy. So you, you can probably keep like the top three or top four at a guess. Right, let's go back to blessing. And Ooh, that was a bit of interestingness. I was just seeing if there was any way there of raising morale or not. Oh. Just checking to see if the recording was actually working. I wasn't expecting a black screen, so if you saw one there, I do apologize. Right, we did lose four people in that fight, didn't we? Hmm. Let's sell this stuff. And then buy a round of drinks. That should hopefully offset some of the loss that we just incurred. There is a ransom broker, so you can sell all of them. Marvellous. Oh yeah, really? Thought I'd be able to hire you. I would like to buy me and my men a barrel of your best ale. 480 for 10 morale. So you would essentially need to do that two and a half times for the amount that I lost. Britannian Skirmisher, I know that you're way too expensive. Happy Widow, you are too expensive. Oh. I was hoping I'd be able to recruit some of them, but apparently not. Right. I think it is time to go and face down Kenema. Although it is now getting to evening, so what we might do is we will, on the shore over here, we'll set up a camp. And we'll rest for the night. Camp. Wait here. Fortify your camp with basic defences. Need a reward of 200. Interesting. There are definitely a lot more options here than are usually possible. Oh. Wasn't expecting to actually start moving. Ah, oh, there's some easy prey to pick off too. Now let's have a double check very, very quickly on whether that improved their morale from resting. Not very much. Not very much at all. Interesting. Alright. I feel good about attacking outlaws. Damn right. Oh, another big hill. This time, though, I'm going to get you to follow me. Okay. So there's another big hill over here. So, the other question that I asked during the last episode, and I've only had two responses so far, but hopefully there'll be a couple more by the time that this actually goes live. I'm actually recording a little earlier in the day than I often do these. And that was why did the Vikings, and basically everyone, not just the Vikings, paint their shields. And several of you mentioned that it was to do with their rank and where they came from. Yeah, that's possible. Um, but it wasn't the answer I was actually looking for. Oh, great. Did you just charge? Sink. Um. Oh. Ah! It's actually because these shields are made of wood. And one very important thing about wooden shields is there is a grain. So if you look on the... you see it on there? Not really. I did see it on someone else's shield though. But you can basically see the direction of the grain of the wood on the shield. So if you struck it in a certain way, you would crack the shield. You want to hide what the grade, where the grain is and which direction it is. So you paint it. And that is the best way of hiding the grain. So like this guy's shield is broken. You can see the planks are lined that way, so the grain would be that way. Hence, it's broken in those directions. So you would never have the shield always facing the same way, like the handle might be here, it might be here, then you paint the front so the enemy can't see where the grain of the uh, shield is so it can't be uh, broken in such an easy way. And there is that. The next question also to do with shields, why were most shields with a leather rim rather than an iron rim? 
There is a reason for it. Most shields, even metal ones, have an, a leather rim instead of an iron or steel rim. Why? Let me know in the comments. Oh, we got a Frisian who leveled up. I'm going to get a Frisian warrior because I don't believe in horses. Well, I do. I should actually use horses in this playthrough, but I'm kind of curious to see how good you are. Uh, I'll take the first claim. Which I guess automatically loses me too. And I'll take first five items. Still really upsets them. Man, you cannot take much stuff when you take the first claim. Like, at all. So, ooh, we have a farmer who leveled up. So a hornman is just a skirmisher. I think I want a watchman. So we will make you a watchman. And after that you become a spearman, then a veteran. Okay. And the warrior. I wanted to have a word with you to see how strong you are. You are a level 21. 7 iron flesh. You're tough. 5 power strike. 4 athletics. You're in medium armor. Ah, here we go. You can see the grain of the shield on this one. So if you struck this from the side, you'd probably break a shield. However, you struck it straight on, you wouldn't. And that's the reason they were painted. Um, 170. So how are you compared to my new companion guy? 23. Much better combat skills. Roughly the same skill points, though. Sorry, roughly the same weapons. Okay, interesting. So the Norse companions are slightly better than the Frisian warriors. Can't tell who has the better armor. You count as a spearman. Huh, okay. Our morale is still average, so I think we'll be fine. If we can catch you, we'll fight you. We catch him, we caught him. Oh, he just gave up. Haha, <laughs> nice. This time I will just share the loot, because I'm not expecting there to be much. Didn't get any morale for that. Disappointed! Potential recruits, another full bondar, sure. Mead Hall, the ransom broker still here, you are. Sell them all. And the host. And that seems to be everything I can do here. Definitely can't hire you. Ah! Just the Aquitanians, apparently. Right, so am I feeling confident enough to go after what's his face? I think I'm going to visit Doran West. Yeah, I'll, I'll visit all the villages again, see if I can get another round of recruits, and then I'll attack the Arl. No one here. Start by going to the top. I mean, I have just basically done a basic triangle. I'm just worried that they're going to have a. He's going to have a big party like that, unless I attack him in his hall, which might be. A little easier. Eskin Kester, is that Exeter by any chance? Yep. Let's have a look. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, it probably is. I was expecting it to be a bit bigger, because I thought Exeter was bigger in this time period. Witten Caster, that would be Winchester, which was the capital of Mercia at this time. Wait, no, not Mercia. Yeah, it was Mercia, I thought. Now, does it have Lancaster? Mamcaster, Mamham. Oh, Manchester. Ha! Cool. Ligualidham. Kerligualid. That probably is. That might well be Lancaster. I might have to look that one up. I asked because I went to Lancaster University and I still have a bit of a an attachment to the place. Which is why I hate anything to do with York. <laughs> so your Vic in this will have to die. Now, I did mention in the uh, very first episode that I was actually writing about the Vikings. Uh, one of the pseudo-bad guys was called Jorvik. <laughs> I mean, they only called him that because he was from York, but still. Kind of shows you my feelings towards the place. <laughs> um, anyone here? Yay. 
just the one. Oh, it's night time. I need to uh, set up camp. Whoopsie. Uh, wait here. Too close to a settlement. All right, we'll camp in the middle here. There we go. And we'll give you until midday. We can have a lay in this morning. All right, morning, fine, whatever. Um, and how has that impacted your morale? Minus four from lack of rest. So you really want like a day off at some point. Below average. While we're here, we'll see if we can get another round of drinks. And maybe we'll visit these two on the way to Kenema. I think that's probably a good idea. No more troops. Happy Widow. Host, there you are. I would like to buy me and my men a barrel of your best ale. 620. Ouch. It's not cheap. How much money do I even have? 1,700. Oh, I've leveled up. Huzzah. Okay, so what skills do I want this time? Maxed out my looter. Trainer is pretty high. Tactics isn't as useful because I'm playing with a very high um, battle size. Pathfinding would be quite good, as would spotting. I could really do with some medical skills, but I'm still kind of holding out that I'll find a companion with that. And I'm going to boost my weapon skills a little. Uh, maybe one of these? No, I don't think so. I think we'll go Pathfinding Spotter. Being able to see threats when they're a little further out is always a good thing. And Pathfinder just makes you faster. Which is also a good thing. Group Volunteers. Yes, I'll hire those Frisians. Dosing this still counts as looted. Interesting. Okay then, Yarl of Kenema. Let's see what you got for me. Do, 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 do. I do like this. We have a little ferry that goes across. Alright, Yarl, let's go. Let's deal with this. <laughs> we'll grab some of your people to uh, fight for me. <laughs> and then we'll visit the Lord's Hall. Okay, where is he? There you are. Wait. No, that's Hemmingson. You're someone else. Where's... Oh, there you are. I saved Dussinger from Sven. What mission did I give you? Oh wow, minus 30. Shouldn't you be busy killing the king? What have you done instead? You went to the aid of dosing and knowing that it was not going to please me. You killed the very man who would support me to take the crown after you killed the king. You betrayed me, your Jarl, I swear. Upon your name, Jarl, heard of house and you'll pay dearly for it. Beware, Jarl, this was friends, man. You are a traitor and I am your enemy now. Yes, I'm sure of that. To honour services provided, I'll give you a few hours to pack your things and leave. Minus 70. Then you will have assassins after you, for I will put a price on your head. You'll have to sleep with one eye open and a knife under your pillow. If you do not leave free, so we meet in person, I will kill you with my bare hands. Someday we'll meet again, and I will kill you. Yeah, you're an ass. <laughs> I thought I'd just have a fight with him, but he's in mail, so I'd have a hard time penetrating that. So yeah. Arsehole. Um, can I take you along with me? No. Oh, can't use my swords in here. Bah! Alright, so this means I need to leave this area. Because he's probably got a bigger army than me. Yeah, 182. Um, so I assume that that basically means I need to go to... Do I start? Nope. The Earl of Kenema is an ambitious and dangerous man. I admire your fortitude to bite him and help save Dosinger despite the consequences this has had. You're a good person. Freeze can be a hostile land for us for now, but I'm sure we'll find our destiny elsewhere. I did what I had to do. The Earl of Kenema is a traitor and I want him far from me. I told you he is a snake. Now you are free from him and we should leave free soon as I fear that he will look for revenge. I've heard that the Kingdom of Mirs over the sea will need warriors. 
we'd bid for Lared. Oops. So I think it's time to go to Dorstad and hitch a lift over to Freeze. Oh, hello. A messenger approaches you, galloping. He stops in front of you, takes a breath and shouts. Thongkirk needs your presence and dosing a Mordred the Viking. He has captured a prisoner from Svel Bullneck's Viking Raiders in the recent battle. He thinks you'll be interested in interrogating him and requests you go and see him as soon as you can. Thongkirk does not know how long he can hold him for the prisoner before the king or the Earl claims it. Alright, cool. Um, okay, so let's go to the ferry station over to Dosinger, which is now no longer looted. See, there was another Jarl right there who saw him as a traitor. Alright, Dosinger. Now can I tell the king? Probably. To the man named Mordred the Viking, my master, the abbot of Finian, has sent me. He has heard of you and wants to talk about an important mission. He wants you to visit him at the monastery, Finian near Baal Hekada. He will pay you 1,000 pennies just to come and listen to him. Interesting. That kind of sounds like a trap, though. I've run into a trap. You're attacked by a group of bandits. Oh, hello. Oh, you're really not. Where are these so-called bandits? There you are. Two of you. You send two men. Really. To go after the fabled warrior, Mordred the Viking. That was a huge mistake. Oh man, I keep thinking of one of them. The enemy's fall is before you as grain to the scythe. Soon you stand alone in the streets. Alone with Bridge and Hard. In the streets, while most of your attackers lie unconscious, dead or dying, searching the bodies, you find a purse which must have belonged to the previous victim of these brutes. Or perhaps it was given to them by someone who wanted to arrange a suitable ending to your life. Man, you are so dead, man. You are so freaking dead. Right. Dosinger. I... Ooh, two freezing warriors. Is that because the populace is loyal, so they give me better quality of troops? Probably. Let's go to the village centre and say sup to Dunkirk, who has proven to be a much better friend than Harrelson. Where are you? Still chilling outside, even though it's like midnight. And my, my men are going to be really pissed off that I haven't rested yet. Mordred the Viking, the prisoner, is waiting to be interrogated. He may have some information. Sure, Thunkirk, take me to him. It's time for some words. Follow me. Torturer. Ship captain. Two Norse companions. Thunkirk. See what you have to say. What about the ship captain? Oh, I see. The ship captain is the guy. Oh, <laughs> yours already hit him pretty hard. Okay. You. Thor, we have a new visitor. Our friend hit me hard. Come and see if you can better him. Um, <laughs> torture, a prisoner wants to be hit. Please accommodate him. <laughs> I'll ask you some questions and answer, right? You won't keep suffering. So then Bullneck will kill you. So then Bullneck was not with you. Where is he? I will say nothing, bastard. Now can I punch him? Um, do, 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 do. Your blow hits the prisoner's face, who nearly falls. Well. <laughs> um, where are the questions? Sven Bornak will kill you. Why did you attack Gosinger? Sven Bornak ordered me to disembark in Dosinger with several men to secure the site of the long, long fort. If all had gone well, our Lord Sigurd's snake in the eye would be sending another hundred men from Denia, D Denmark to help Jarl Hrolf Haraldsson be crowned king. I know only a bit, but I think the Jarl of Kenema promised to send five hundred men on the summer's expedition in England if he becomes king. However, this is no longer relevant. We failed, and Sigurd Snake in the Eye will not sacrifice more men. He will need to keep his brothers in England. You can rest easy. Except that I'm going to England, probably. Um, I say nothing, bastard. <laughs> I lose reputation. Surely that should be gaining me reputation.
Sven Bullneck has things more important to do. Sigurd snake in the eye called on him a few days ago from Denmark. If you want to know where he is, go and ask Sigurd himself. But I suggest you ask him more nicely than you asked me. Alright. Any more questions? And I will heal your wounds if I still can do that. Uh, nope, apparently I can't. So good, snake in the eye. Ragnar's is a name I heard. Tell me about Ragnar. You know nothing. Will you? No, I'll ask you that one last. Um, more power strike, because I'm still very, very powerful. Prisoner shouts and cries in pain. You're sure is going to answer your questions. He twists his mouth and looks at you with content. Sigurd Snake in the Eye is Sven Bull next Jarl. Sven is my Hersir. Hersir? Not sure. Both of them are powerful men. Great warriors. So stay away from them, although we'll send you straight to hell. Tell me about Ragnar. You wish to know about the great Ragnar Logbrook from the Yingling Seton clan, descendants of Odin, eh? Well, he was a Jarl filled by all Christians. He attacked England and Frankia many times, and he is now famous for his huge expeditions. He knew how to unite and lead men. Ragnar was more than a man, and his sons too. He had many sons with many wives, especially Lathgerta and Auslag. Ivar the Boneless, Bjorn Ironside, Halfdan, Sigurd, Snake in the Eye, Uber, and many others. He had more than ten sons, many daughters. If you are so clever, you will avoid confronting them. You should even ask Sigurd's forgiveness for killing his men in Dosinga. They were attacking, so no. Unfortunately, King Eil of Northumbria in England took Ragnar prisoner and threw him into a pit of poisonous snakes. Now Ragnar's sons have gone to Northumbria and killed its kings. Northumbria is Danish land now, and soon the rest of England will follow. Sigurd's snake in the eye and Ragnar's other sons are calling to arms many men in Denmark. They will join Ivar and Halfdan, Ragnar's son... Oh, sorry. They will join Ivar and Halfdan Ragnarsson and and will advance over the rest of England. Everyone knows. Are you on the ship? Yes, we attacked some ships recently before Sven Bullneck went away from us in Northumberland. I remember the Wodenrick because I liked its name. Woden's an important gun to England bef before all became Christians. I remember once meeting a family that still wor worshipped Woden in a village we looted. They were the only ones whose lives we spared. Woden we call Odin. Yes, I know that. Uh, did anyone survive your attack? Very few, unfortunately. Usually we try and catch them to sell the slaves. Where the prisoners go? Sven Bullneck. Oh, interesting. Sven Bullneck took them with him. He was going to leave them in his in its hideout. Sorry, in his. Man, I can't read today. Sven Bullneck took them with him. He was going to leave them in his hideout before continuing his journey north. The hideout is in Denmark and it is a good place and well defended. But I will not tell you where it is. I will not betray my masters just so you can kill me. There is no need to torture him for that information. There is a man in the port of Reeb who deals with the Vikings for their slaves. He is a Frisian from Dosinger who has thrived in Reeb's port master. One often finds him outside by the docks. He is not a good person, but he will sell whatever information you will require. When you talk to him, please do not mention my name, because it was I who forced him to leave Dosinger some years ago. Okay. I have nothing to add. No more questions. No, I'm, I'm just going to leave you. I'm not going to tear up your arms, because you did actually answer. Uh, Thonkirk, do you have anything else to say? I did not think we can get more information. It seems your fate, your weird, takes you to, Dan to Denmark, my friend. I thought it was taking me to Mercia. Free him, I don't want his blood to weigh on our hands. Because he did say uh, spare the other pagan guys. So, it's, it's fine. It will be done as you have said. As for now, what will you do now? I've gained reputation from that. So apparently, positive reputation is people like you, and negative is people fear you, I assume. In Fries, I am not wanted. I've earned powerful enemies against whom I cannot fight now, Thonkirk. My priority is my mother. I must save her. I must try and find spas passage to Denmark on some ship and look for Sven Bullneck. Maybe we'll never meet again. I know you'll be back someday. Um... If possible, a return will stop in dosing and sailor, friend. So I hope the people dosing and love and admire you. He will always find a bed to sleep on the fire to keep warm by. Now I need to find a boat that is travelling to Reeb. I thought I was going to Northumbria. I can help you with that. One of Sven's boats was left behind relatively undamaged and has been repaired in secret. It is our gift to you for saving us. The ship awaits you at a beach near Dosinger. And also someone else is waiting for you there. I have a favour to ask, Mordred the Viking. 
You remember I told you that someone in the house of the Earl of Kenema, someone passing me information. Well, that person is my daughter. The Earl snatched her to serve in his house as a maid for his wife. She managed to escape from Kenema, and now I want you to take her along. If the Earl finds her, he'd take her back to his house, and maybe he would kill her. I need you to do this for me. Mordred the Viking, the boat is yours. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll take her around the ship. Farewell, Thonkirk. Where's Gesund, my friend? Where's Gesund? Where's Gesund? I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> More men! Sure, why not? I have an army of 44. Interesting. And where's the girl? I guess she's at the boat. Where's the boat? Free speech. That would be the boat. But that will need to wait until next episode. Thank you very much for joining me. I do hope you're enjoying this series. I'm sorry about the uh, screw up and all the text that I was just reading there. I'm not used to having to read it aloud. I just kind of read it to myself. So hopefully that will improve as the episodes go on. If you have any tips or advice for me, then please do let me know down in the comments as well. Likewise, um, the question that I had posed to you about why shields have that leather rim. Why do you think that is and not an iron or a steel one? Do let me know. I'll catch you next time. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you then.